Good morning guys, I hope this finds you well. I'm here today, highest point of Bristol at Cosham. That's the, the building behind us, the view behind you. It's fantastic. Today I'm gonna to be talking about time lapses. Have you ever seen on people's time lapses and vlogs and things like that, where you get that motion blur and you think, wow, I'd love to get that. Absolutely love to get that effect. But they get halfway through the video and they say, wow, all you need to do, just get onto Adobe or get onto Final Cut Pro and you think, oh, here we go again. I ain't got that, I can't afford that. I'm using iMovie and I'm using a, a standard Canon. <laughs> this is what you can do and this is what I do it might not work quite as well but I think it gives you just pretty much the same results I've done a few examples over the past couple of days uh, different sort of lightings well predominantly when it's dark because it's been after work and I've not had any other chance unfortunately I'll try and get one today and just to try and show you what settings I use I'll put all the settings on the screen uh, just to get that lovely bit of motion blur so it's not just photo after photo after photo and it looks kind of choppy you get that lovely lovely sort of blur people does he not know I'm trying to so yeah pretty much the basics of it is um, wait there it's all right I had it in my pocket all along so what I use because my camera doesn't have uh, an internal intervalometer I've, I bought one of these is that gonna focus it's not gonna focus but what this is this is a newer remote control for a Canon so you can do all types of things on this. Obviously it's a remote shutter if you want to do long. So where was I? Um, so yeah, you can, if you're doing long exposure photos, obviously you don't want to be touching the, the camera whilst, whilst you're trying to get a nice long exposure picture. Um, you can use the remote, press the button, it takes the photo for you. So the main thing I've been using it for is the intervalometer. So you can set a time, say every two seconds. And when you want- So what I've been tending to do is set a timer set a timer for every two seconds you take a photo uh, and I think I've been setting the shutter speed to about one second I think that's the right terminology anyway so the, the shutter takes a second to obviously flip, flip back so that gives you the long exposure 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 to give you that that blur effect to give you that motion so when then you put it into the time-lapse sequence it, it all looks like it's moving and it's all swishy and swashy and whoa. Lovely. So that's what I've been using, uh, again, because my camera doesn't do that because I can't afford a, a 1DX or one of the new Sonys or what have you. So, um, yeah, nice, nice, brilliant. This is, I think I paid £9 for this on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. Works a treat. Just put batteries in the back and off you go. Plug it in. I'll go into more detail of what I do when it comes to putting it into iMovie. There you have it. Let's have a little look at some examples. One bit of advice I would give, keep the focus in manual focus. Get your focus right. By all means, focus with the autofocus, then switch off the autofocus to manual focus. Then you'll just get a straight focus all the way through the whole time lapse. And then you won't be messed about with focusing in one point, focusing in another point, there, 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 there. It just won't look very nice. Also, make sure you've got a nice sturdy tripod as well so there's no movement, especially with the slightly longer exposure photos you don't want to go wasting 20 minutes of your life with shaky footage and focusing in and out so just make sure you got those two bits right and you should be you should be all right i tell you the great thing with this is you can just plug it in uh, you can set a delay if you want you can also you can even set the, the the shutter speed on this as well but to be fair i do all the all the settings i can on the camera and then i just use this for the the intervals in how often a photo is taken and how many photos are taken you can leave it on infinity so you just press start keep an eye on your watch and then when you feel you've taken enough photos you can stop it okay so I just want to quickly show you what I do for the time-lapse let's open one up for instance okay so 
Um, here's one I made earlier. So you've imported all of your photos into the media section here. Then obviously you take all of the photos that you want to include in the time lapse, drag them into the timeline here. What I do then, I select them all, go to info up here, and then it will usually say uh, four seconds. Obviously we don't want four seconds per picture, so I always put it down to the lowest at 0.1. So once you've done that, what I then do is just import it straight away. Uh, you can always do you can always do your auto enhancing and your color profiles and things like that, but um, just hit file and then turn that into a a video file. So you've got the time lapse there. And then once that is done, as you know, it will then be just a video file. This is the finished product. It's always best to just double check to see if it's all good. There we go, you can see we've got the nice motion blur on the cars going by. Okay, so I'm pretty, I'm happy with that, I've checked it already. So then when you want to put it into your video, and then we can just import the video file. Just wait two days for that one to import. And there you have your, your time lapse. At the minute it's about 29 seconds and no one wants to watch a time lapse for 29 seconds so let's see how it looks at about 5 seconds. Yeah. 